Before we begin with this video, let's get one thing 100% straight. I do not think that skill builds in general are worth playing with. Not only do most of the skills feel clunky to use, they also simply aren't powerful enough. The offensive skills do not take out enemies faster than your guns do. So when it requires the player to look at enemies to use skills and then press the skill button and then wait for the skill to do the work, it is just not worth it 9 out of 10 times or 99 out of 100 times. You might get some of those situations where the NPCs are clumped up together well enough to uh, get some value out of some of the explosive skills, but most of the time it's not worth it. And on top of that, even if you spec into skill power and if you mod some of your skills, let's say you get a lot of extra damage on your hive or on your drone or something like that, even when you get something like that, it's not going to be worth it because you're going to lose out on so much damage that you would have on your weapons. So yeah, your skills are going to be more powerful, but you're less powerful. And if you're talking about healing skills, sure, healing skills, having them being a bit stronger is not bad. But still it's not worth it when you think about all the talents that you can get on gear, such as safeguard, clutch, preservation, and trench, or patience that provide just as much, if not more, self-healing than a buffed up drone ever could. So, for most players, uh, I'd say just make a damage build and pick some self-sustained talents if you're playing solo or if you really feel like you need some more sustain. And honestly, that is the best way to play this game right now. That being said, due to a couple of particular interesting, surprising mechanics uh, around the cam launcher, I've managed to make a healer build that doesn't completely suck. And it is actually able to outheal pretty much whatever damage NPCs can throw at you, and even outheal the damage that other players can deal to you with ease. Uh, is this build going to be valuable in PvP? Maybe, but I think it loses a lot of value because, again, the build is focused around the cam launcher. And the cam launcher actually also heals your enemies uh, in PvP. This is not just in the occupied dark zone, this is also in the non occupied dark zone and even in conflict. So. Uh, yeah, enemies might not be able to kill you with all this healing, but if they come stand next to you or run around you to also get the heal from you, you cannot kill them either. So, there's that. Uh, but for the upcoming raid, for example, which I expect to be very difficult, a build like this can definitely come in handy. So, that's why I build it, and that's also why I wanted to share it today. The build itself basically lives on two interactions with the cam launcher that caught me by surprise when I first found out about it. The first interaction is something that I already shared with you guys a while ago. It is the fact that the healing from the cam launcher charges is actually stackable with itself. So I already showed this off a while ago, especially useful for the solo players. If you pop a couple of these cam launcher canisters in a row, the healing will actually increase a lot. And you can easily get from zero health to full health in just a few seconds. And this is something that I didn't think the developers would allow, seeing how the support station in the Division 1 had multiple reworks since its launch to prevent this very thing from happening. But hey, it's in the game, uh, that's the way it works, so for now, just uh, run the cam launcher, because it's really strong, because it's stackable with itself. Then, the second interaction that makes this build really strong is the fact that the skill duration stat, which usually refers to how long deployable skills such as the turrets, hives or seeker mines or drones can stay up before getting automatically destroyed. Uh, this skill duration stat also applies to the duration that the cloud healing effect, you know, that the cloud itself stays on the floor before disappearing. So yes, with more skill duration, you have a heal that stays on the floor for a lot longer. And because it heals, a given amount of health or armor every second, it ends up healing a lot more in total before disappearing. And again, yeah, this surprised me quite a lot because skill duration usually affects the deployable skills. And I think that this cloud is technically a projectile. So you're saying, all right, cool, just get those duration mods and slap them on the cam launcher for a heal that lasts longer and thus also heals for more. Well, no, I think that would be too easy, would it? Uh, I think the duration mods, they're strong, but they're definitely not strong enough to be worth running on the cam launcher when the cam launcher itself has so many other stronger mods that can fit in these slots. For example, you have mods that give you more ammo, so you can stack more of these clouds. 
Uh, I think the mods go all the way up to 6 plus ammo, which is what I'm still chasing. I only have the 4 plus ones, which give me a total of 7 charges. Uh, but yeah, as soon as I have the 6 plus charges, obviously that's going to be way more worth it over than uh, just a little bit of a longer duration. And then there's also these type of mods, the ones that just increase the healing values that you get per second. Which I think go all the way up to 55%. Uh, mine is only 45%, but even 45% is just a crazy amount if you think about it. So I think that either of those mods, the charges and the increased healing, are far stronger and far more important to take than a little bit of duration, since the goal is ultimately to get more healing output. And while duration is nice because it makes it so that the cloud stays on the floor for longer, it doesn't do much for burst healing, and I'd also just rather have more charges if I need more burst healing, so... I really don't think it's worth to pick uh, the duration on the on the mod itself. So then, where do we get that crazy lengthy duration from? Well, take a look at my gear. Notice anything? You know, just just anything about uh, the talents, maybe about the fact that I have the capacitive talent everywhere, which is a talent that increases skill duration by twenty percent. Yeah, yeah, that's what you should be looking at. This is giving me a total of 120% increased duration, which means the cloud stays on the floor for 11 seconds instead of 5. And this is why I've said for a few weeks now that uh, you shouldn't get the skill power talent on your gear, or you shouldn't go for the cooldown reduction talent, because sure, these talents are decent, and they're probably uh, good in other builds in some cases, but just look at this. You can get skill power and cooldown reduction plentiful on the rest of your build, on your stat rolls. Again, just look at my stuff. We have skill power and cooldown reduction on the mask. We have skill power on the chest piece, cooldown on the holster, cooldown and skill power on the backpack, skill power on the gloves, and then even more skill power on the knee pads. Skill power, skill power, skill power everywhere. I have more skill power and more cooldown than I realistically need. When I get better mods for my skills, such as the, the plus 6 ammo instead of the plus 4 ammo, yeah, I'm probably going to need all that skill power that I got on my build. That's why I got it. But for now, I have too much skill power. So to add the skill power talents on top of that would simply be unnecessary. Because all you need skill power for is to unlock those mods. After that, skill power does nothing. And sure, uh, there's an argument to be made for more cooldown. Uh, but you got to keep in mind that the cooldown for all the skills is kept at 10 seconds. 5 seconds if you self-destroy them, but that's not possible with the cam launcher. So for the cam launcher, the minimum cooldown per charge is 10 seconds. And since the default cooldown for the cam launcher is 20 seconds, that's without any cooldown reduction, having more than 50% cooldown isn't going to do anything for the cam launcher, since it's hard capped at 10 seconds. I have 49%, I'm missing that 1% cooldown, but hey, screw that. It's, it's good enough. The build's good enough. We, we can just look away and pretend this, this isn't the case. But yeah, when you can have enough skill power and cooldown to pretty much hit the caps and requirements that you need to hit, why would you ever want to waste your talent slots onto more skill power or more cooldown? Uh, I guess you could argue that this allows you to have a bit more damage or more armor or health on your gear, uh, which isn't a bad argument per se, but this is ultimately a, a healing build. This is something that keeps your damage dealers alive, allows them to spec all their talents into damage so that they don't need their own survivability and that you can just shoot heals at them. And also, who needs more armor when you have this amount of healing? <laughs> as long as you don't get one shot by anything, uh, you're not going to die with this, trust me. So yeah, uh, instead of getting skill power or skill haste on the talents, get skill duration. Pop those heals and start stacking them up. You literally cannot die until you're out of chem launcher charges, which as long as you time them right and always have at least a few on the floor, it can take a very long time until you're out of charges, even with only four plus ammo. Uh, it's a 10 second cooldown and they last 11 seconds on the floor. You do the match yourself. Now, before we get into some neat tips and tricks of making this build work with the gear mods, I do want to share a few more talents that make this build more whole, so to speak. The build works perfectly fine with the stuff that I already talked about in this video, but if you want to bump it up even more, I guess, then uh, there are still a few things you can do. First up, there is the safeguard talent, which is the really strong talent that everybody uses by now, which can be found on the backpack. And even after the nerf, I think it is still one of the best talents in the game. 
It is a must-have in any solo build, as it actually boosts your skills and medkits by 150%. And with a healer build like this, obviously that's going to be very strong. Uh, since I'm in a group, you know, I won't get all the kills, but I'm definitely going to be able to get just one kill, which is then going to give me super, super, super strong heals for 20 seconds long. With this, I can stand still, I can pop a few heals, and then my friend can stand next to me, with this LMG that has 100 rounds, full glass cannon build, he can shoot 100 rounds into my head, and I just don't care because safeguard and cloud heals stack with each other. That's headshots, all headshots. All headshots? All headshots. Just beaming your forehead. My Just beaming <laughs> your forehead. Beaming your forehead, there's nothing happening. <laughs> nothing is happening. That's 40k fucking hits. Yeah. If you can get safeguard on the backpack in addition to all of this, it's really, really strong. And then on my weapon, I have Reformation, which is a weapon talent that increases healing by 25% for 25 seconds if I get a headshot kill. So that is something that works really well with Safeguard. They're both on kill mechanics. They both boost my healing when I get a kill. It's just that Reformation is sort of like an extra bonus if I manage to get a headshot kill instead of just a normal kill. And then Rooted is the holster talent, which increases my healing by another 25% if I use the skill from cover, which is not that useful for PvP, but it's a PvE build. And in the more difficult contents, it's, it's really good to have as well. Handling talent is obviously Allegro. Is that how you say it? I think Allegro, it's uh, the handling talent, which gives you more RPM, which is the only handling talent you should be using on assault rifles, I think. And the secondary weapon is the Chatterbox, which the holster talent is actually insane as well. 20% more RPM. Everybody knows what it does by now. This is nothing new. This is nothing that I came up with. Uh, it's just really strong, so why not use it? And then I also have a pistol with In Rhythm, which gives you a 5% chance to refresh the skill cooldowns. Not always useful, a little bit random, but every now and then it gives me an extra cam launcher charge from time to time. And be honest with me, what other holster talent am I going to run? 10% more armor when deploying a skill? Eh, maybe, but I feel like this is a little bit better. Now, of course, you might ask me why Assault Rifle isn't an LMG better now that the magazines have been nerfed a little bit. And well, I've got a couple of very simple reasons for that. First up, the guys that I play with who have high DPS PvE builds usually have a lot of damage to elites. Probably uh, damage to elites talents on almost every gear set and then also a lot of damage to elites on the mask. Uh, so when we're playing PvE and when we're playing the raid, they will probably be focusing down the bosses, the big guys. Which means that someone else preferably needs to clear the ads. Uh, and my prediction is, is that there will be a lot of red bars in the raid as well which then are the NPCs that sort of run at you and basically kill themselves, but they still need to be killed. And uh, versus those type of NPCs, the Assault Rifle is actually the best choice because of 29% health damage. And of course, I'm also using the Survivalist Specialization, which comes with 15% uh, Assault Rifle damage and a whole bunch of other stuff that's actually really good for a healer build. It comes with 15% more outgoing healing, so that's going to be on top of everything we already have. It's going to come with fire grenades, which are actually pretty good in PvE, because uh, you know that special ability that makes those bosses invulnerable for some time and then you can't kill them? The fire grenade can actually prevent that or interrupt that, so if they have that on them, just fire grenade and then you can damage them again most of the time. It's, it's not 100% consistent, but it's how I got it to work most of the time. Basically got the whole ongoing directive gear set utility in one special grenade choice there. And you also get 10% cooldown reduction from cover and the healing seeker mine with the survivalist specialization. So yeah, this is pretty much where the whole build sort of comes together. It just works really well together. Now I will say that I did cheat a little bit with this build as I basically utilized what I think is a little oversight on the death's behalf with the gear mods to boost my skill power up to quite insane heights. You see, with the skill power rework, the developers lowered all the requirements uh, for the skill mods and also lowered the amount of skill power that you can get as a stat roll on gear and gear mods. But there are also some gear mods that have skill specific uh, skill power increases and for some reason I don't think that these values were brought down. Not sure if this is intentional, not sure if the developers wanted to make these skill specific skill power stat rolls a little more powerful. So 
I don't actually know if it's an oversight, but right now these skill mods are really good. For example, I've got this one, which gives me only 40 skill power in general, but then 121 cam launcher skill power and 350 seeker mine skill power as well, which is just insane if you think about it, because this one mod gives me more skill power for the seeker mine than the whole skill power stat roll does that I have on my gloves. Uh, that gives you something to think about, right? It's a pretty strong mod. On the chest piece, I also have one utility mod slot, which I filled up with another purple mod with a pretty high single skill power roll. Uh, and then on the holster, I have my last utility slot, which I filled with a low skill power mod because I already have enough skill power on my build thanks to the other two mods. Uh, but this mod has 5% outgoing healing as the second stat, which is also something that I'm pretty happy with. 5% healing on the healer build on just one gear mod? That's pretty crazy if you ask me. I could have one more utility mod slot if I had a different mask. I'm actually looking for a Gila Guard mask, but I haven't found one that rolls with skill power, cooldown reduction, and also has a common talent slot yet. I know it exists. I have one in my stash that's almost identical, but I haven't been lucky enough yet to get the perfect roll. So yeah, if the devs ever decide to take a look at the skill specific skill power mods, not saying they should, I'm just saying if, then I can always grind for a Gila Garb Mask, which comes with an extra utility mod slot. And then I can fit another skill mod in there to make the build work again, so to speak. I, of course, also have some offensive and defensive mod slots, and I filled those up with random mods. Just more damage, more health, or more armor, nothing too crazy, just whatever I could find in my stash. I don't even have an offensive mod equipped in my backpack slot, even though I still have some room in there for an offensive mod. Uh, I would equip one of those low-level blue mods, which, if you don't know by now yet, you can farm with a level 23 character in the dark zone. But RNG hasn't blessed me with a 6% assault rifle one yet, so I guess I'll farm a bit more for that, or I just won't put a mod in my backpack here, because I'm pretty sure the developers are going to take a look at those blue mods, if anything, because, yeah, I don't think they want players uh, farming with a low-level character to enhance their higher-level character. But we'll see about uh, we'll see about that. Last up, the skill mods for the seeker mine because I totally forgot to go over that when I talked about the cam launcher and the mods. I have uh, a cooldown reduction mod of thirty eight percent. I didn't need more cooldown for the cam launcher because remember the cap's only ten seconds. Uh, but the mine could actually use it. The mine now has a five second cooldown if I manually destroy it and. 10 seconds if it gets killed. And then I got a bunch of other random healing mods on there. I've got one that's 52.5%, pretty high. And then one that's 14.5%, really low, uh, which I'll replace as soon as I get a better one. Uh, but again, haven't been lucky enough yet. The build isn't the best. I need better cam launcher mods, a better mask, better gear mods, uh, better seeker my mods. But for now, I guess this is what I'm running with, and uh, I've got enough time to farm for these things before the raid comes out. Also, in PvP, you can replace the mine with a booster hive, which is pretty strong as well, as it gives everybody movement speed. Uh, you can equip stim efficiency mods to boost the movement speed beyond 20% as well. But as long as you can actually heal enemy players with the cam launcher, even in conflict, like... I don't know, man. I, I can't play PvP without kind of cringing on how silly it all is. And then, then I ask myself why I'm even playing PvP to begin with. So I, I actually don't want to talk about PvP right now. It's just, I don't know. It's just going to end up in another rant. So I'm going to end the video here. This is the build. This is the video. I hope it helped out. I hope Massive doesn't nerf this before the raid. I'm thinking they might making a video uh, like this is a risk for sure. And uh, if they do, then then just take my advice that I gave at the start of the video, which is don't ever play skill builds. As always, I'll see you guys later, or like they say in the Netherlands, see you later.